Detective Michael Lawrence is a very ordinary man. He's a family man and a dedicated professional, just a regular guy who happens to be a policeman. He would never think of himself as a genius, like Sherlock Holmes or Ellery Queen. Nor does he come out with two fists swinging, like Sam Spade or Joe Mannix. But he does have one quality that sets him apart. Detective Lawrence has never been able to walk away from an unsolved case. But in tonight's film, he may just have to. A popular music professor is dead, the victim of an apparently motiveless killing. Emma Gagnon may not have been the brightest academic star, but she had a heart for her students and her husband and was dearly loved by all. No one wanted her dead, not her ward Bridget, who longs for a career on the stage, nor her grieving husband or her student from long ago, well-known mystery writer Samantha Harris. Even Emma's runaway troublesome student Sarah has no reason to want to kill her. As Lawrence himself states, her death isn't a murder so much as it's a tragedy. And Lawrence knows something about tragedies. His own family has been torn apart by an automobile accident that has left his daughter in a coma. While he struggles to solve the case, he finds himself forced to face some truths about his own situation. And as the body count rises and his superiors begin to lose faith in him, Lawrence starts to wonder if this is the one case he just won't be able to crack. Life is a kind of chess, with struggle, competition, good and ill events. Lawrence's partner, Soam, quotes this line from Benjamin Franklin at the beginning of the case. But what may be more apt is a line from Ecclesiastes, there is a time for everything and a season. For Detective Michael Lawrence is about to face his own season of darkness. Committee was going to send the dean of the college to pick us up. Well, after all the effort it took to bring you here, I wanted to make sure you were the real one. <laughs> and we're glad you're here too, Matt. Definitely. Absolutely beautiful. Your concert's going to be wonderful. It'll be all right. Oh. Are you going to be home for dinner? I can't. I'll be busy. I hope you like the house. Emma helped pick it out. You remember Emma Gagnon, don't you? I remember Emma. Uh, how's Miles? Uh, well, we broke up. We decided we weren't suited for each other. Emma, have you seen my keys? What? My keys. Oh, uh, no, sorry, dear. We've arranged. Are you okay? It's just another one of my headaches. We've arranged for a little get together at the house tonight. You know, a little informal gathering of friends, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll come, won't you? I'd love to. Good. Sorry. Where's your key? I lost it. Detective Michael Lawrence to the stand. We have to talk about this. No. No. I... I... 
we'll talk about it tomorrow. And then we got the call. By we, you mean yourself and your partner, Detective Nick Lasson? Yes. Will the defendant please rise? This court finds probable cause to believe that the accused Joshua Flynn has committed the various breaking and enterings committed in the Portsmouth area, as well as the July 4th robbery that resulted in the death of Mrs. Kathleen Skye. This court further finds that he worked alone with no assistance or assent from anyone else, that he committed the murder with the use of a dangerous weapon, specifically a baseball bat, and that he brought that bat with him with the intent to use it in the commission of the murder, and that Detectives Lawrence and Song arrested him with probable cause to believe that he committed the offenses charged. Accordingly, he is bound over for trial in the jury session of the Superior Court. Court is adjourned. All rise. Another one's safely off the streets. At least until the trial. Enough evidence stacked against him, it would take a miracle to get him off. Well, miracles seem to happen to the wrong people. Good game? Not bad. She started out with a Sicilian and then moved on to the Yugoslav defense, and now she's doing something even I don't recognize. Sicilian? A classic, but still effective move. It was perfected by Giulio Pelerio back in 1594, but the move predates him, of course. Oh, of course. But I guess chess is better than shoots and ladders or Dungeons and Dragons. Well, you say that, but life is a kind of chess with its struggle, competition, good and ill events. What is that, another one of your Shakespearean quotes? No. Ben Franklin, guy with the key. Listen, let's get back to the office. Get those reports out of the way. I really want to talk to you about that new medical wing, and we would love to have your family's name on the new building. Well, I would love to have my family's name on it, so why don't you please see? Awfully good single malt you've got there. No, it is very good. Samantha, thank you so much for coming. It's so lovely to see you. May I take your thing? Sure, thank you very much. I would like to introduce you to Dr. Jones of the German department. It's very nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. You too. You too. Uh, Samantha, you have a book coming out. I do. Another one? I do. Yes. That one was the children. It was actually Oh, Samantha, looks like you need a drink. Would you like me to get you something? Or? Oh, thank you. I was actually on my way to the bar. Okay, okay. Thanks. You need company later on. Thank you. <laughs> Sam? This is Ganthan, of course. Emma, please. You look wonderful. <laughs> and you look absolutely stunning. Thank you. It's been so long. It must be at least 20 years since I've seen you. A lot has happened in that time. Yes, um, my son Matt, for example, he's 14. And my Bridget. I, uh, I'm, I'm not sure you've heard, but Bridget Madden is now my ward. Bridget Madden. Oh yes, that girl who... Professor Stewart told me about her mother. It's very sad. Your family was very generous to her. She's very grateful. She's turned into a beautiful girl, and what a voice. I'd really like you to meet her. Uh, could you join us for breakfast? She's got an early rehearsal, but we could have a little late breakfast. Well, Matt and I have some plans tomorrow. She really deserves to meet you after all your family has done for her. Please come. Welcome. Thank you. Hey, Candace. Is she available? Lizzie's always available for you, Michael. Go right on in. I'm afraid, Michael, you just missed your wife. I know.
Hey baby. Happy birthday. Birthday girl. Look at these flowers, sweetie. Daddy's here, sweetie. Squeeze my hand. Please squeeze my hand. Let's see. Oh, let's see. On my way now. Off for your walk? You'll meet us for breakfast. Yes. I'll see you at the concert hall. Fine. You'll think about what I asked you? I'll think about it. You'll give it some thought? Lots and lots. That's all a fella can ask. Hmm? See you later. Goodbye, dear. I don't know where she is. I don't keep her schedule with me. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell her. Say she's really, really good. She is, isn't she? You'll have to meet her after the show. Oh, Peter? Peter, come and meet Samantha Harris. Do you think you can well, come back and practice tonight? That does. Um, do you want to get no? Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, no, see? Okay. Yeah. We can do that later though, right? Yeah, that sounds good, all right? But other than that, I thought it sounded terrific. Yeah, I think we're pretty much good to go for the concert. I'm so glad. <gasps> is that who I think it is? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, she's doing a lecture series. As it happens, I was looking for a place to set my next novel, so when Professor Stewart called, I thought, why not where I'd gone to school? Why not, indeed? It was rather lucky, eh? I really forgot how lovely your Portsmouth is. You're seeing her at her best. There's nothing more beautiful than Portsmouth in the spring. Almost makes winters worthwhile. So you came out this early in the morning to see our young star in the making? I was bribed at breakfast. Oh. Eric, we're expecting Harry. He should be here just any time. Peter, you didn't tell me we were going to have a guest, a celebrity here at a rehearsal today. <laughs> Samantha Harris, my wife, and your biggest fan. Oh my our gosh! Winners. I was so excited when I heard you were coming today. Our your biggest fan. So, okay, so can you tell me what your book, next book's gonna be about? And is the delicious Mark Romo gonna be in it again? Uh, we're all set then, right? Yeah, yeah. Are you okay? I just got something going on. It won't interfere with what we're doing, right? No, no. I love him so much. I mean, you know, Peter's great and all, but like, Mark, like, I dream about him at night. I have some of your Where is it? You want to sign a couple of them to me? As much as you could sign, like, my face. Me. Don't do this. I, I, I was only trying to. Uh, I'm still going to get you afraid of me. The publisher's absolutely against me today. I, I mean, you know, I, I promise. Like, there's times when I think about Martin and I don't think about Peter, but, like, I don't tell other people that. And he's okay with it because we've been married a long time. Right, Liz? I'm so so only trying to help. You're going to get people killed. I promise. Like, I would never tell anybody. Something with some. Right here, sir. Good morning. What do we got, Tom? Death by undetermined means. Woman collapsed in a spasm and died. Witnesses said that it looked like a stroke or an allergy. Yet her husband insists that she has no allergies. 
Witnesses also said they saw a young woman fleeing the scene when they approached to help. The paramedics got suspicious, so they called us in. Poison? Yeah, the paramedics said the symptoms are similar to strychnine. Strychnine? What's that mean? That to me, sir. Why would they? Strychnine, so? I mean, this isn't an Agatha Christie novel. I know, sir. From what I can determine so far, the morning went like this. Our victim got up, skipped breakfast, went to mass, and then came here to listen to a awards rehearsal. She was going to get breakfast with a friend of hers afterwards, and the only thing that she had had is a cup of coffee from the same place her friend had gotten coffee. Yet her friend is showing no signs of any symptoms at all. Her husband insists that she has no allergies, so for the moment, we can rule out anaphylactic shock. Is her husband here? Yes. Did he see it? Unfortunately, yes. Did he recognize it? Uh, it's the wife's son. I mean the woman fleeing the scene. Did he recognize her? Yes, he did, but he doesn't know her name. He knows as one of his wife's students. His wife, our victim, Mrs. Gagnon, was a teacher and counselor at Noble College. We have the young lady's description, but we can have it circulating in no time. Well, don't rush it. If this teacher was poisoned, most likely it happened before the woman even got on scene. She probably just panicked when the victim collapsed. Find her, question her for sure. But if this is murder, which I doubt, most likely we'll look for someone else. Where are the witnesses? Upstairs. Lawrence, you look like something the cat dragged in. I feel like it. What do we got? A dead woman. I can see that. It's impossible to determine what she died of here. But whatever it was, it was a horrible death. You could tell by the arch of her back and the distended jawline. It was a horrendous death. Feeling a little skittish, are we? Was it poison? It's possible, I guess. According to witnesses, she started seizing about an hour ago. Died after the paramedics arrived. They had to drag the husband away. Body's still warm. I guess it's possible a woman of her age could be tetanus, meningitis, seizures. Was she on any medication? Yes, she was. Her husband's providing us a list, mainly vitamins and blood pressure medication. But she doesn't even have any, but on her. If this were strychnine, how long after she ingested it would she have felt the effects? Come on, Mikey. I know, I know. Just humor me for a minute, will you? 20, 30 minutes, depending on height weight, whether she ate, what she had. That also means that the young woman she was talking to here couldn't have forced anything down her throat. They were having a rehearsal this early in the morning? Yeah, according to Peter Chase, it's the only time I could manage. The singer Bridget Madden was here rehearsing, and uh, our victim invited a friend of hers to listen, uh, Samantha Harris. So where's this Bridget, the ward? Uh, she left immediately after rehearsals. And you said they were drinking coffee? Yeah, they both work from the same place. We have the cups for analysis. All right, well, let's get the cups to the lab, boys. I doubt if they'll find anything. How soon will you know what exactly killed her? I have to do a tox. A couple of days. All right. You know how those boys in tox can be. Oh, yeah, I know all about it. Yeah, he's in shock. You right, sir? Yeah, I just haven't been sleeping that well, that's all. Well, over there, that's Peter Chase. That is Samantha Harris. Both of them are here when it happened. Samantha Harris? S.J. Harris is her pen name. Mystery novels, bestsellers. She's up here teaching a seminar at the college. She was also one of Emma Gagnon's first students 20 years ago when she started teaching. Her and her husband were gonna to go to breakfast together. And while they're waiting for the husband, Emma, Emma collapsed. Please. Know, you can't Please. stop me from making one phone call. Please. Something the matter, Mrs. Harris? I mean, besides Emma dying. Detective Lawrence, this is Sam Harris. This is Peter Chase. The detective has a few questions for you guys. Questions? Questions, I'm done with questions. I need to call my husband. She's really not doing well right now. Well, can't they wait, Nick? He means me, sir. We know each other from wine tasting. Naturally. We just have a few questions for you, Mr. Chase, and then you can make your phone call. Did Mrs. Gagnon show any signs of distress or upset this morning? No, not that I noticed. Ma'am, 
No, I mean, she had a headache. Did you take any medication for it? No, I, I offered her aspirin, but she said it was going away. Did she seem nervous or worried about anything? No, no, she was, she was excited about the concert and that I was going to see Tommy shop. Tommy? An old college friend of mine runs a bookshop. I have a signing, a signing there in a few days. I see. And the woman in the entryway, did you recognize her? I didn't even see her. I had never seen her before, Detective. Why are you asking all these questions? Surely this was just an allergic reaction or something. Well, we're not sure at this point. Uh, Soam said that you and Mrs. Gagnon had coffee together this morning. Yes, but there couldn't have been anything wrong with it. I'm fine. Uh, is there any reason why someone would want to kill Mrs. Gagnon? No, no, no. She was the sweetest, the gentlest. It's just a ridiculous idea. Well, someone thought it likely. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. It was an overreaction, Detective. Her husband was in shock. He was making wild accusations. I don't blame him, of course, but I can't believe anybody- Well, that's very likely, but we have to absolutely be sure of these things. Now, can you think of any reason why someone would want to kill her? No, I already said no. Can I go now, please? I have a son here and I need to see him. I really, really need to see him. Sir, we have their contact information and they've already been warned about leaving the city limits. You can go, Mrs. Harris. Just stay where we can find you, that's all. Thank you. May I? Go ahead. A little rough on her, weren't you? I don't believe her. About what? I didn't think she's in the all I don't know. Before. Honestly, so I don't think there's much ground for murder inquiry here. But that Sam Harris, she's holding something back. I know it. I'm gonna go talk to the husband. See what you can find on Emma Gagnon and Samantha Harris in the meantime. Okay. Who's that? That is Arlene Chase, Peter's wife, and she will chat your ear off if you give her a chance. Did she see anything? About as much as everyone else. I think it's best if um, Paul candles her. And she seems chatty. As I said, I think it's best if Paul candles her. Good. Sir? Sir? I want to tell you how terribly sorry I am. This must be such a great loss for you. She had no allergies. There was nothing wrong with her. She was healthy. She was so... All right this morning. It can't have been allergies. It can't have been an accident. We will find out, sir. I promise you that. I saw a girl running away from her. Do you know who she was? One of them is students. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Did you know her name? I don't know. Just a student. She met Emma on a regular basis. Flute, I think. I don't know their names. Tallest girl. Slim, brown hair. <laughs> Typical. We'll ask around. She probably has some information. In the meantime, is there any family member that we can contact for you, sir? My son. Huh? I haven't seen him in a while. He and I don't get on well. The award then. Uh, is there any way we can contact her? No. If you could, Detective, I'd like to go home. All right. If we have any information, we will contact you. Mr. Gagman? Peter Chase said he'd give you a ride home. He's downstairs. I sent out a request for information on Emma Gagnon and Samantha Harris. I figured someone should be working while we're here. Not much point, as far as I can see. What do you think? I think this isn't a murder. It's a tragedy. Tommy? It's me. I, I need to talk to you. Do a decimal system or not. If it's the sequel, you put it right next to the original. Hey! 
You're late. I know, I know. Sorry. Excuse me. Anna. Hey, look, I gotta go. Hey, how'd it go? Fine. Need me any more tonight? Run those background checks? Yeah, I did. Nothing significant. You want the rundown? No, no, no it's late. I think that we don't need them now. You can give them to me tomorrow. All right, I will. Anything interesting? Well, purple butterflies put my king in danger. But I think I can handle it. It's a pity he has such a lame name. She, I would think, sir. But, pity nonetheless. Good night. Have a good night. You know I haven't the time for... Oh. Well, don't just stand there and call the police! Lawrence here. Mikey, I got that preliminary report you want. You're not gonna like it. I just got the preliminary report. Murder? Or a massive overdose until we get the toxicology confirmation. I'm considering this suspicious. This may be pertinent. Emma Gagnon's office was broken into last night. What? Mm-hmm. It was discovered this morning. Doesn't appear to be anything taken. But considering she's our victim, the robbery boys thought we might be interested. Well, they are right. I'm going to want what you dug up in those background checks. Mm -hmm. We got about an hour before Mr. Gagnon gets home. Why don't you say we check this out, shall we? Why not? As you can see, they did a very thorough job, almost as if someone had it in for her. Is that likely? You obviously don't, or rather didn't, know Emma. She was everyone's friend, everyone's mother. If Professor Stewart had a difficult student, send him in here to Emma. She was more effective than any of our student counselors. The motherly sort. Oh, very. She always had several troubled souls under her wing. The alumni, uh, any trouble there? No, no, no. I mean, she wasn't an academic star, so certainly no professional jealousy, if that's what you're thinking. And no, there weren't any love affairs either. She was not the sort of play around on her husband. Uh, she may have, of course, she may have had any number of people in love with her, but she wasn't the sort to do anything. So, what are we missing here? I'm afraid I couldn't tell you. Uh, no computers or instruments, those are the only thing I can see of any value. Uh, of course, we'll have to take inventory, but I couldn't account for her personal items. I just can't make heads or tails of it. Well, that's what you called us in for. Well, maybe we should get the lab boys in here and uh, see what they can find. Well, they will be overwhelmed. <sighs> I guess what I don't understand is why they sent two homicide detectives to look into a break-in. Well, Mrs. Gagnon's death has been labeled suspicious. Until we determine the cause, anything to do with her is of special interest of ours. You understand? Suspicious. That's ridiculous. She had an enemy in the world. Well, be it as it may, we have to cover all, all our angles. Now, I would like to speak to Professor Stewart if he has a few moments. He hasn't. He's in New Haven today at his vacation house. Besides, he wouldn't know anything about any of this. But you have him call me as soon as he gets back. And what, pray tell, should I give him as a reason? Well, tell him he's a person of interest. <laughs> so, if no one wanted to kill the saintly Mrs. Gagnon, what are we looking at? Suicide? It seems very unlikely. Why? Because she's Catholic? No, because she still had two troubled souls in her care. Good morning. Is Harry home? I don't know why anyone would want to ransack her office. There isn't anything in there anyone would want. Except for me and maybe Bridget. Was there anything in there of a personal nature? I suppose there must have been. She worked there for over 20 years. Uh, 
I used to tease her that she felt more at home at work than she did at home. Do you know if she had any grudges against her, any difficult students? I can think of one. That's the girl I saw running away. I knew I had seen her before. She was on that DC trip with Emma last year. What was her name? Sarah Hopper. I remember because there was some sort of trouble and she caused it on the trip. Do you know what the trouble was? No. Emma said it was nothing, but the police were involved. That girl is nothing but trouble. Emma said she came from a broken home, but when you're breaking the law, you're breaking the law. What difference does your background make? Had she and Emma been having troubles? I don't know. I do know that Emma had been getting a lot of strange phone calls lately, and they worried her. She wouldn't tell me what they were about. <laughs> she didn't want me to worry. Emma was like that. What happened to her? We're still in the process of trying to figure that out, sir. Uh, you and Bridget related? Bridget? <laughs> no. No. She was one of Emma's causes. Emma has... had a lot of causes. It's kind of a mess down here. This is Emma's office? She called it her playroom. She'd use this room for her own projects, and uh, sometimes she'd help students come down this down here as well. How long have you known Emma for? Oh, my mom started working for her when my father died. <laughs> sometimes I'd go visit my mom down there in the office. When did your father pass? Oh, that was before I was born. A car accident hit and run. He left us without anything, so Emma found my mother a job at the college. And when my mom died, she t Emma took me in. And they got me that scholarship. Well, she sounds like a good friend. You know, she was one of those people never happy unless she has some sort of cause. She was nice, you know, really nice. She just I always got the feeling that I was just another one of her charity cases. Was Mrs. Harris one of them? Sam Harris, the writer. She was with her yesterday. Uh, went to hear Bridget. Her. Yes, I think so. <laughs> Mrs. Harris was one of Emma's students a long time ago. Emma hadn't heard from her in years. She was here visiting, was she? Uh, no, no. She was here to give some sort of lecture or something at the college. And Emma wanted her to hear Bridget's concert. Another one of Emma's fundraising causes. Yeah, or she and Bridget treated it like it was Broadway debut. Emma has been at the... had been at the venue every day trying to make sure things are all right. She's so excited. Bridget's going to go ahead with the concert. Emma? Would have wanted it that way. I just can't believe that. Do you have any enemies? Quarrels with a student, faculty, anything like that? Oh no, she never quarreled with anybody, except for me. But that was trouble. I see. They were constantly at odds. Bridget was a difficult child. She thought the world owed her. It wasn't anything serious. Just the normal parent-child relationship. I wanted to interfere, but Emma wouldn't let me. She said Bridget was too delicate. Do you know what they would quarrel about? <laughs> Money, studies, her future. Emma wanted her to go to Europe, and Bridget wanted to make her Broadway debut. 
one idea was just as ridiculous as the other. But Emma loved Bridget. Despite everything, Emma loved her. Emma. She loved everyone, detective. She just loved. She and Harry would argue about it. You see, Harry's in the army, so every place outside of America was a terror stronghold. I'm not going to Europe. I'm going on Broadway. It's my life, and I'm, I'm going to live it my way. You told Emma this? I tried, but doing it my way meant giving up a scholarship, and she just kept harping about that. People gave you the money, Bridget, so you shouldn't let them down. She drove me mental, but honestly, who'd want to kill her? It'd be like killing a puppy or something. What about her students? Any problems there? I'm sorry, I... I just don't know what I'll do without her. <clears throat> I know. I've been there. Your wife? My daughter. No, not for now. You're not planning on leaving town, are you? No, why? No reason. Just, uh, we'll probably have some more questions for you about your guardian and you. Well, you have my phone number, so if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks. I do. One minute! Oh, that's, that's my friend. He knows some people in Boston and New York, and he's setting some auditions up for me. I couldn't have told Emma, of course, because uh, she would have flipped. Of course. Good luck. Thank you. You know, it's going to be strange not having Emma around. You go to expect... I've got to go. Was he? Policeman. What? What was he doing talking to you for? He wanted to know about Emma. I think she was murdered, Colin. During that last big storm in January, black ice, white out, it was a big mess. I warned them not to go out, but they didn't listen. The game was too important. The team was on their way to the semifinals. Anyway, they hit a patch of ice on the way home in 95, and they spun into oncoming traffic. She... She was a passenger in the car, and she got trapped in the car. The driver was barely touched. The people in the other car were fine. They hit the passenger side and they pinned her in the car. The paramedics thought she was dead. Spinal injury, cranial damage. If she ever wakes up from this coma, it's very likely she'll never move again. I am sorry. Well, they tell me where there's life. There's hope, but I'm afraid I don't always see it that way. Believe me, sir, we will find the person responsible for this. Justice will be done. <laughs> I'm afraid I lost my faith in the justice system a long time ago, detective. Have you ever wondered what you would do if you had that culprit, that driver, for five minutes, detective? Just. Five minutes? 
alone? You can't tell me that you wouldn't... You leave that to us, Mr. Gagnon. <laughs> Justice can turn to vengeance without our noticing. Can't blame a man for wanting. You can't tell me that you wouldn't want to have that culprit who is responsible for your daughter's... Well, it's a little difficult in my case. Difficult? The driver was Lizzie's mother, my wife. Tough one, huh? You have no idea. Another one of those Sicilian moves? No. I moved Queen's Bishop to King's Knight 3. Ought to keep her busy for a while. I'm pretty sure it will. You find out anything interesting? Yep. Bridget Madden has a boyfriend. I think I know him. Broke into her office. But why would anybody do that? They think she was what? Oh my god. How could she? Look, can we talk? I can, I can be over in a few minutes. Okay. So it wasn't natural causes? No. This is murder, not suicide. Well, she doesn't fit the profile of a suicide victim. She doesn't fit the profile of a murder victim either. She was a music professor. Who would want to see her dead? Well, there's got to be something that somebody isn't telling us. You think? Do you have any leads? Well, as of right now, Samantha Harris is our best suspect. Samantha Harris, the writer? Well, she was the only one with the victim at the time of death, and they did have coffee that morning. And she was the only one that had the opportunity to slip something into it. But what would be her motive? Why would Samantha Harris come all the way from California to kill her music professor that she hasn't seen in 20 years? I don't know. It's ridiculous. Well, it's the best lead we have right now. Look, Michael, you know I like to give my investigators full reign on these cases. If I didn't trust you, I would not have you heading up this investigation. Noble College has connections, Lawrence, within the city, the state, even the country. If you go in there like a bull in a china shop, the roof will come down on top of us. So what you're saying is proceed with caution? All I'm asking, Lawrence, is that you proceed with diplomacy. Every ripple has an effect. That's all I'm asking. Besides, I like the runaway student as a suspect better. I will keep that in mind. And Lawrence, keep me in the loop on this one. Always. And Lawrence, how's Janine? She's fine. We're all fine. Mm -hmm. You're back. You are working all those background checks yet? Yes. Did you know that McGagnon got a parking ticket once? Oh, figures. Well, I was talking about Peter Chase. He said that Emma Gagnon volunteered anywhere and everywhere she could, unlike her husband and Bridget. But especially she liked volunteered with art communities. What, was she trying to avoid home? Could be, but it didn't really seem like anything was all that wrong at home. Now, Harry Gagnon served in the military, Vietnam, was medically discharged, spent various times at various VA hospitals, has a few things on his record like uh, drunken disorderly, a couple incidences of road rage. They knock it all up to PTSD, though. Um, but ever since he's been married to Emma, he's been clean. And so, is Bridget. What about Sarah Hopper? Any record on her? Oh, yes. Sarah Hopper. Sarah Hopper, DUIs, rowdiness, and she's been pulled in by the drug boys for questioning several times. But they have not been able to pin anything on her. Why was she with the victim at the time of her death? And why did she run away? Scared, maybe. But she can't be a suspect. I mean, 
Emma would have had to have ingested the poison at least 20 minutes beforehand. If it were strychnine, Emma Gagnon never left New England. She taught music, she was highly inflammatory, she was a housewife, a churchgoer, she never swore, she never lost a temper. There's no reason in the world why anyone would want her dead. Mm. And what about our uh, celebrity, S.J. Harris? <laughs> S.J. Harris has a biography on her website that's very incomplete. Her maiden name is Brown. She comes from a very rich family out in California. She did spend two years here in Portsmouth at Noble College, but she left 20 years ago and hasn't been back since. She has a husband, Jonathan St. Jean. I do not have a photo of him. He is a businessman. He has offices in uh, New York, Chicago, London, Paris, and she has one son, a son that's not Jonathan's. Also, interestingly enough, she was invited over here by Professor Stewart. And Professor Stewart is helping put on Richard's concert. Any record? No, well, nothing worth looking into anyways. All right, we're gonna to wanna to talk to everyone. Let's start with that student, Sarah Hopper. Right. Do you have an address on her? Yeah, work address, home address. Her business profile says that she works part-time at Atkinson's Books. Atkinson Books? Yes, it's a small, trendy, offbeat music bookstore right here in Portland. Do you know it? No, but Atkinson is helping put on Bridget Madden's concert on Saturday night. Coincidence? Well, we better find out. Our primary importance is Sarah Hopper. You go to her place, I'll go to the shop. If she's not there, kind of poke around a little bit, see what kind of girl she is. Mm -hmm. If not, just continue on with the background checks. All right, you got it. Purple butterfly or chess? Neither. My mother. You take it. Excuse me. Is Thomas Atkinson around? He's upstairs. two of us. I'm Tina O'Reilly, her roommate. Who are you? Detective Soane. Oh God, what has she done now? Listen, you've got nothing to worry about. I'm here, and I'm not going to let anything happen. But it's just, I haven't been back here since five. Excuse me. I'm sorry, this area is not open to the public. My name is Detective Lawrence, and I'm looking to speak to you about one of your employees. This is Harris. Detective Lawrence? Well, come on in. I don't want people seeing that the police are looking for one of my employees. I guess I better be calling. Did I interrupt something? No, no. I have a signing here in a few days. I just, we were just going over the details. Is that what you do before a book signing, do you? Not that it's any of your business, but we're old friends. We were catching up. Well, I better, better be going. Matt's going to be waiting for me. Well, it was nice catching up. Yes, it was, it was, it was really nice. D do you want to maybe get together and, and have something, and get some dinner? Or? Yes, uh, that'd be great. And then, um, till tomorrow. Just with the bonds. This is Harris. So, what can I do for you? Sarah Hopp, I understand she works for you. Yes, she does. Is, is she in trouble? Not that I know. We just want to speak to her. Is she working today? No, she's uh, she's in class right now. I see. So, if there isn't anything else... How well do you know Emma Gagnon? I knew Emma really well. And back from the day that she used to teach here. We, uh, we worked on community projects together. And, and before you ask, when all of that unpleasantness happened, I was right here, getting ready for the day. And you already know that we're treating her death as suspicious. Well, word travels fast, but that's insane. I mean, who would want to hurt Emma? It would be like killing Mother Teresa. Did Emma have any enemies? None that I can think of. 
That woman wouldn't hurt a fly. Well, someone broke into her office this morning. Can you think of any reason why someone would want to do that? None at all. Is that why you're looking for Sarah? Did Sarah work yesterday? Yeah, she did. And what time did she get in? She was a little late, probably about 10, 15. And how well do you know Mrs. Harris? We're old friends. They're like you were all old friends, like the late Emma Gagnon? Yeah, just like that. We're all old friends. Well, if you see Sarah, let her know that I want to talk to her. And that's Lawrence with a W. And with a W. I'll be sure to do that. Now, uh, if you'll excuse me, detective. That'll be all. Thank you for your time, Mr. Atkinson. Sarah, call me as soon as you get this, okay? Yeah, I haven't seen her for in a few days. I think she slept here last night because some stuff was moved around, but she was gone before I got up. I don't know when she'll be back. Is that unusual for her? Very. Usually I have to drag her out of bed to get her to school or work on time. You go to the same college? <laughs> Thanks, but no. I graduated a while back. I work and sublet the room to students. Very economical. Well, you've got to be to afford rent in this town. How is Sarah as a roommate? We seldom see each other. It works out best that way. Do you have any boyfriends? Several. Okay, anyone special? The longest running one I can think of is this fellow here, Colin Rideout. But I think she's more interested in him than he is in her. Any idea how I can contact Colin? I don't have his number. He lives on State Street and works at one of the restaurants downtown. Which one? Um, the Rusty Ale. He works the bar, keeps odd hours. Look, is Sarah involved in anything serious? We think she may be able to help us with the current investigation, that's all. That's a relief. Were you expecting worse? It wouldn't have surprised me. Look, I keep my nose clean. I try not to get involved in her life. She does her thing, I do mine. We try not to annoy each other in the kitchen. But no, it wouldn't have surprised me to learn that she was involved in something. Hmm. Well, we are very anxious to talk to her, so if she, you get in contact with her, could you get in contact with me, please? Sure. Anything else you need to know? Do you know Emma Gagnon? No, I don't. I heard she died, but that's it. Is that what you want to see Sarah about? As I said, we think she may be helpful in the current investigation, that's all. What exactly is it you do, Miss O'Reilly? I'm a nurse. Really? And, um... Well, that's just something I do for fun. Hmm. Looks like fun. Thank you. We have a description circulating. Sarah Harper will turn up. Who's in the front running for a possible suspect? Her husband? Harry Gagnon? No. Certainly not. Well, why not? You know her schedule. Probably knows her medication. You could have slipped something into her toothpaste for all we know. Then make sure he was in the sight of witnesses when it was liable to take effect. What was the motive? Insurance. He's putting his wife through college. Maybe he... Ran out of savings, needs the money. Killed his wife to put his ward through college? It's kind of stretching a little bit, don't you think? Anyway, he wanted to retire with his wife. Well, so he says. Well, since we're pulling names out of a hat, what about our Peter Chase? <laughs> what motive and what opportunity? What about the ward, Bridget? Well, besides the family squabbles, no real motive there. Well, that's the problem with this whole thing. Everyone loved Emma Gagnon. No one wanted to kill her. What about Thomas Atkinson? He's Sarah Harper's boss. But he was working with Emmer on Bridget's concert. And he knows Samantha Harris. They went to college together. Any possible motive there? Not that I can see. Just a tightly knit group of professionals. Well, I get the feeling that Atkinson wanted to be a little bit more than professional with Sam Harris. Still not a motive to kill Emma Gay. From where I'm standing, Sarah Harper's the only suspect worth considering. Well, keep at it. Something's bound to turn up. If we're lucky. Mm. Good night, boys. Ma'am?
Your mother? No, you're not going to believe this. Purple butterfly just moved Queen's Bishop to King's Four. No. Mm. That scuttles my gambit. I'm going to have to reconsider my position. Well, why don't you just move the king to the left? Well, I'd have to give up the whole game then, shouldn't I? And that would never do. Right. Get out fighting some. I always do, sir. <sighs> well, with any luck, Sarah Hopper's bound to turn up. Well, she's got to be somewhere. That's for sure. Who is it? Colin? Sarah? I need your help. Do you have it? I'm sorry. I looked and I looked. I've searched. Look, do you realize what you've done? The police are crawling all over the place now. I know. I, know. I just... Johnny, it's me again. Can you give me a call? I love you. You haven't heard from your father, have you? Jonathan St. John is my stepfather, not my father. <sighs> Matt, don't. Not tonight. Hey, Mom, are you okay? I'm just tired from this whole... I just missed you, Jonathan. Well, he's coming here in a few days anyways, isn't he? Okay, then. I guess I'll make myself some supper. Yeah? Oh, hey. Hello? Hello? Well, this is Charles. Hello, Dean. I just heard the news from my sister. I just wanted you to know I am so, so sorry. Thank you, Charles. No, no, we're fine. You take care. Thank you. Sir, we, uh, we found Sarah Hopper. As you can see, she wasn't universally loved. She bludgeoned to death? Sure looks that way. Oh, God. Time of death? I'd say late last night. I don't know more after an autopsy. What was she doing here? That's uh, out of my area of expertise. The uh, how and the when. That's you guys. Do you need anything else from me? Just the autopsy report, please. As soon as I can. How was she identified? The student ID in her back pocket. Was there anything else, like a backpack, purse, phone? No backpack, purse, or phone. There's no sign of the weapon yet. Yeah, there wouldn't be, but search around anyway. Okay. I think 
this is related to Emma Gagnon's death? I don't know. We found the body. Karen Thompson, she was out for an early morning jog. I saw the body. Wanna to talk to her? Yeah, I think I've got her. Sir. Excuse me. Nick, can I just pull you for one quick second? Sure, I'll do. Excuse me. Hey, it's alright. It's alright. Hey, John. I wasn't aware that they called the Stadies in yet. You haven't, as far as I know. I live just down the street, and I heard it on the scanner. Thought you could use this. Oh, thank you. Although, it looks like you're going to be calling in a state police pretty soon. Two bodies in two days? What have you got? Serial killing? Nah, I don't think so. I think they're connected. But I got a feeling about this one, John. Well, from what I remember, your instincts have always been right on the money. Oh, looks like the press is here. I better get out of here before they blow this all out of proportion. You know where to find us if you need us. Thank you, John. So how are you feeling? Okay, I guess. Sir? Okay. One second, very right back. What do you got? Hulk found Sarah Hopper's purse on the beach, and this was in it. Shop eyes, Falk. Thanks. Oh, well, it seems dead. Take it back to the lab for analysis. We'll do, sir. There are two different MOs here. I think we're looking at two different killers. Well, she argued with Emma Gay. She went to school with her ward. She worked for Thomas Atkinson. And she just happens to die after we issue an APB. There's just way too many coincidences here for me to believe that it's not related. The question is, how? Where are our parents? Out of state. Well, we're going to need somebody to formally identify the body. So, what on earth is going on? The body of a young woman was discovered in Prescott Park this morning. A jogger out for her morning run made the gruesome discovery. Well, I was just out for my morning run, as I usually go, and I was jogging along, and all of a sudden I noticed something on the rocks, and it turned out to be the body of a young woman. It was terrible. While the name of the victim has not been released yet, we do know that the victim was a student at Noble College, and that the police are treating her death as suspicious. Just two days ago, popular music teacher Emma Gagnon, also of Noble College, died of poisoning in Noble Concert Hall. When pressed for details earlier this morning, the police would not confirm that the deaths are suspicious. Is this death related to Emma Gagnon's murder? We cannot confirm nor dismiss that possibility here. Right now, we are treating these as suspicious and we are searching for the truths in both cases. Should students and faculty be on alert after two killings in three days? Well, there is no reason for anyone to not be alarmed. Isn't Sarah supposed to be on today? Despite police reassurance, not everyone is resting easy. It's like really scary when things like this happen. You know, I'm a student there too, and I just think they should be doing something to keep us safe, you know? As of right now, Hey Matt, you want some lunch? Uh, uh yeah, sure. Uh, you feeling better, Mom? You have no idea. Meanwhile, police continue to insist that there's nothing to fear. They will release a statement and have a press conference earlier this afternoon, but until then, all information is being kept under wraps. From Four Tree Island, this is Alexander Thaw. Hello? Sarah? Thank you very much. School is sending us Sarah's file. 
Got anything on the roommate yet? Well, I contacted the hospital where she works. Her supervisor said that she worked the 7 to 7 shift last night, and she never left her post. Good enough alibi, not that she ever was really a suspect. I've had the dean and the college on the phone all morning. Are you sure they don't have to worry about this becoming an epidemic? I don't think this is a serial crime. You're going to have to give them a better reason than I don't think so, Michael. In this day and age, people will look for any reason to panic and go crazy. And frankly, I don't blame them. You do think these two murders are related? Yes, and we're working on that right now. So, do you have anything on Sarah Hopper yet? I spoke with her student counselor and pulled up her police record again. And frankly, we have more on her than we do on Emma, and she's a third the age. Criminal record? Yeah, well, minor. DUI, rowdiness. She's been pulled in by the drug boys a few times for questioning. She's originally from Virginia. She has parents and two sisters. Have the parents been contacted? Well, we're waiting on the roommate to ID the body, but we haven't gotten a hold of it yet. Yeah, well, I don't think there's time for that. I would get the student counselor in here to identify the body before this turns into a PR nightmare. Do you have anything I can tell the parents? That we're following up on every lead and we'll have some answers for them soon. Terrific. Now I have to make up something to tell the press to calm them down. If you find out anything else, let me know immediately. Right? Of course. Yes, ma'am. <sighs> this is such a mess. Yeah. By the way, I pulled a record on Colin Rideout, Sarah's on again, off again boyfriend. And? <laughs> Assault, battery, drunk and disorderly. He's also suspected of being in one of the local drug rings. A real nice guy. You think he's involved somehow? Well, I think so. Last time I saw him, he was leaving Harry Gagnon's house with Bridget Madden. All right, you go talk to him. I'll stay here, wait for the council to ID the body. Stop by Sarah's apartment, see if a romance on it. Will do. I'll even take Eagle Eye Falk along. He's a little bored this afternoon. And the phones have been ringing off the hook. Oh, this has been dreadful. That poor girl. Have the police been in touch? Yes, yeah, so the detective Lawrence. He said he wanted to give you a call. Wanted you to give him a call regarding Emma Gagnon. Of course he would. I suppose I should give him a call now. That was quick. What's going on here? Breaking and entering an assault. A woman who lives here was assaulted. Is she okay? She's bruised. Heck of a woman chased off the perp with a gun. Get an ambulance inbound now. You all right? Shaken, but not stirred. He came at me and my gun went off and he ran away. Do you know who it was? Oh yeah, it was Colin right out. John? Stay here with her until the ambulance arrives. And then secure the location until you're relieved. Falk, you're coming with me. So Where are you going? Make a house call. Hello, Colin. Going somewhere? Not me! Get him, Falk! Listen. I gotta thank you, Colin, for making this difficult for us. You can't touch me. I didn't do anything. Oh, yes, you did. Up there, I saw you assault a police officer. What do you say, Falk? Sure felt like it. You're coming to the police station with us. Yeah, you get to ride in the nice, shiny police car. And if you're a really good boy, we'll even put the sirens on for you. Detective, that's a gift from my honors English class. Not what I would purchase for myself, but I appreciate the sentiment and the affection for my students. This has been simply dreadful, detective. Two murders in three days. Now, I didn't know Sarah Hopper, poor girl, but Emma Gagnon was a simply wonderful human being, warm, motherly. Did you know Emma long? Oh, yes. 25 years, we started teaching together. She was a, a mother hen even way back then, always ready to help the underprivileged students. 
helping people with their studies. She wasn't the best musician, mind you, but she was a very gifted teacher. It's just a shame that she didn't have a ch child of her own. I thought she had a son. That was Harry's son from a previous arrangement. I see. I don't know how much help I'll be to you, Detective. I've been at my summer home in New Haven for the past three days. Are you planning on summer break? No, I'm planning on selling. I've reached a new plateau, Detective. Time, time for something new. Anyway, I'm, I'm afraid I really don't know very much about what's been going on here for the past few days. Well, we're just trying to get some background information now that I know that her and Samantha Harris are friends. Well, Emma taught a few classes that Sarah attended when she was a student here. But beyond that, I don't believe that they were any closer than a student-teacher relationship. Mrs. Harris and Mrs. Gagnon were together at the time of her death. They went to see Bridget Madden sing. Really? I had no idea. How does Samantha Harris get to be here? I met her and her husband a, a while ago in California and invited her here to do a lecture series. Uh, to be perfectly frank, the college isn't doing as well as I'd like, and I thought a well-known author as a guest faculty position might boost our visibility, to quote the young people. Well, was she doing this on uh, pro bono? There have been some very generous donations to help her appearance. Uh, you don't think she's involved, do you? We are just trying to be thorough. So these donors, would Thomas Atkinson be one of them? Our donors require a certain level of anonymity. Uh, but I can tell you that Thomas and Samantha, when they were students here, at one time were considered a couple. <laughs> Samantha Harris and Atkinson seem like an unlikely parent, doesn't it? I would have thought so too, but girls of that age are open to a bit of experimentation. Anyway, it didn't last for very long. How well did you know Sarah Hopper? I didn't know her at all. You would be much more well served by asking her student counselors about her. Uh, I'm still in shock about her death. And call a ride out? I'm sorry, is he a student here? I just thought maybe you knew who he was. Do you think he's involved? Well, he and Sarah Hopper were a couple and there were drugs involved and seeing that they were students of Emma's, I thought maybe that... Absolutely not. Emma Gagnon was above those sort of things. And Bridget Madden? Uh, I don't think so. No, no not our Bridget. Uh, she would have hardly taken the time. Uh, she's a very driven young woman. You can only hope that her talent equals her ambition. <laughs> oh. Hello? Oh, yes. Tell them I'll be a moment. If I have another appointment waiting, Detective, is there anything else I can help you with? No, that'll be all. You're not planning any overnight trips, are you? <laughs> Detective. You don't think I'm planning on skipping town, do you? So, I'm on my way. What were you doing in Ms. O'Reilly's apartment? It's my girlfriend's place too. I was just picking up some of my stuff. Didn't steal anything. No, you didn't. You didn't steal anything. You didn't steal anything. No, you just broke in and ransacked the place and assaulted the occupant. But you didn't steal anything. She had a gun. Came around the corner too quickly. And I got scared. She tried to kill me. Why aren't you pressing charges against her? Oh, you're right. We should press charges against her. I mean, press charges against her for having a license for the gun, the right to protect her life and property. I mean, you were you were in the clear though. I mean, you didn't have a license for breaking and entering. What were you looking for, Colin? It was personal stuff, all right. Sarah was going to give it back to me anyways, but after she died, it was going to be more difficult. How do you know she was dead? She was only formally identified this afternoon, right around the same time you were seen fleeing the O'Reilly apartment. How did you know Sarah Hopper was killed before the rest of the world did, Mr. Rideout? He could have known because he could have killed her. 
No. Yeah, her roommate did say that your relationship was on the rocks. Maybe he wasn't ready for her to move on. And you know what else? He doesn't have an alibi for last night. That's a shame, Mr. Ryder. You've got to have an alibi. That's criminal training 101. What do you say you give us a DNA sample? A beating like Sarah Hopper took is bound to leave traces. I didn't kill her. Then you got nothing to worry about. Your neighbors said that they heard an argument in your apartment, not necessarily saying it was him, but an argument so loud and violent that they almost called us in. Now, what I'm thinking what happened was this. You got an argument with Sarah, you lost your temper, and you beat her. Yes. I, I did it. I hit her. I didn't kill her, though. She screwed up something and I lost my temper. She left around 10 o'clock, though. She was all right. Bruce, but all right? Yes. Yes, look. I didn't kill her. I only knew she was dead because I saw I was in the park this morning. Were you upset with her because of the drugs she lost? How did you... Answer the question, Mr. Rideout. It wasn't drugs. Colin, do me a favor. Give me something to go to the DA with. Something so I can tell him you're a little forthcoming in this interview. Because right now, we have men going over your apartment and Sarah's as we speak. And believe me, they've already found enough evidence of possession and dealing to put you away for a very long time. And they've only been in your kitchen. <sighs> Forget it. What if we let you go? What if we let you back out on the street, Mr. Rideout? Would that make you happier? I don't think it would. Because... His dealers already are finding out how much he screwed up. And pretty soon they're going to be coming to you for answers. Still don't want to answer? Fine. We got enough to ask the DA for murder one. Let's do that. Why not? Wait. Wait. All right. Yeah, you're right. Sarah worked for me. She needed the money and I needed a courier. So, I used her to make deliveries around the area. We modified her backpack, put in a secret pocket in the side. It was, it was actually kind of smart. Nobody would suspect her. She was a little bit of a flake, but she knew all the spots on campus that didn't have security cameras. And she was honest. Nothing ever went missing. Then last week I got a big order and... She was supposed to deliver, but... Something happened and she lost the backpack. She lost it. She got into an argument with one of her classmates. Teacher brought her outside for discipline, and when they came back, the backpack was gone. And what did you do? Told her to find it before we got in trouble. I mean, we could both eat it if the backpack got into the wrong hands. She told me she told me she knew who had it and that she could get it back. Who had it? I don't know. I think one of her teachers. She came to me last night and said she broke into an office to find it, but turned up nothing. So you slapped her around? She was going to get us both killed. She didn't turn off the goods. I wasn't going to take the fall for her. And they say chivalry is dead. What did she do then, Colin? Cried. She told me she had one more place to look. She wouldn't tell me where, though. I think she was afraid I was going to go with her. And what about Bridget? What about Bridget? Well, aren't you training her to be your next courier? So that when Sarah Hopper inevitably failed and you had to get rid of her, your business could still go on? No! God, no. If I had even suggested it, Bridget would have turned me in. Look, I may be a lot of things, but I'm not a killer. When Sarah left my apartment at 10 o'clock. She was all right. And that's the truth. We'll be right back, Mr. Rideout. Don't go anywhere. If he's telling the truth, that backpack is the reason Sarah Hopper was with Emma Gagnon the morning she died. But if he is telling the truth, it doesn't explain either killing. Or where the backpack is. Where is it? And what does Bridget Madden have to do with this whole thing? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. This isn't making any sense. But you know what? Let's let him sweat it out a little bit. Coffee? Hi. Hey. You want? Uh, are you ready to go? Uh, just a second. No, honey, I'm leaving. You okay? Yep. Hey.
Bye, honey. I'll be home late, okay? Anything I need to know? No, we're just trying to find the possible connection between Rideout, Sarah Harper, and Bridget Manor, but nothing yet. You look nice. Thank you. I'm going to see one of your prime suspects in concert tonight. You see, I had you pegged for a Madonna fan. I prefer to be a material girl, but I don't love this stuff. So please feel free to call me if you need me tonight. No, well, no. We wouldn't no. dream of interrupting your cultural experience. Not at all. Have a good time. Thanks for nothing. Good night, boys. Purple Butterfly, a new game. New game, same player. I'm using the Calabrese counter gambit. I ought to keep her running, but tonight her offensive isn't that good. Going in for the kill, of course. Well, to do anything else would be an insult, now wouldn't it? I'll just send it over the uh, the uh, Sarah Hopper report. It seems she was beaten, then killed with a cylindrical object, a pipe, plastic, maybe metal. Uh, time of death between midnight and 2 a.m. Uh, she had some bruising uh, prior to the attack. She was a fighter. She had blood and skin underneath her fingernails. It was a, it was a tough night. If you say that again, any sign of drug use? Oh, she was a user. Arms like a pin cushion. We sent it to Tox. Oh. I got something for you on the Gagnon report. What'd you find? Uh, strychnine, definitely strychnine. Two pills, one partially dissolved, one more so. We sent that out too. So you think that might be the method of poisoning? Well, with the absence of food and drink in her system, I would say it's a fair assumption. Looks like they found a pill in Emma Gagnon's digestive tract. Didn't Samantha Harris say she offered Emma pills the morning she died? She did, but she also said that Emma refused on that. What if she changed her mind? Are you suggesting she wasn't completely open and truthful with us? A witness? No. Why don't you say we pay Samantha a little call tonight? Why not? Your jacket, sir. Thank you. So let's all please welcome Dean Stewart. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I cannot tell you how proud I am of our students, our staff, and their hard work. With diligence and hard effort, they have achieved great progress. We may be able to wrap this all up tonight. I still don't see a motive. Neither do I. But let's let the suspect supply that for us. As you all know, we lost a beloved member of our musical staff this week. Our friend, Emma Gagnon. Emma was a talented musician, a gifted teacher, and a marvelous human being. She dedicated her life to her students, her family, and her charitable works. Emma believed in the goodness in everyone. She knew how to make everyone shy. She was everyone's friend, everyone's confidant, and everyone's mother away from home. I would like to ask you now for a moment of silence for our good friend, the keeper of confidences, and the defender of all, Emma Gang. So, do we go to the concert? No, let's not cause a stink. Looks like she's not going anywhere tonight. Oh, good dinner it is anyway. Nice. Yes? What? I'm on my way. What is it? Just come on!
Is she gonna be all right? She's gonna be fine. She's gonna be fine. Nurse, only one at a time uh, to be admitted. I gotta go now, bye. It's really hitting him hard and I just, we haven't spoken about it, not, not really. We, we pretended everything was fine, but he won't talk to me. He won't even look at me anymore, but I just, I just don't know what to do. Thank you. She needs a mother. Let's go, son. from this. I know you're angry with me for what happened because I, because I was driving the car that caused this. Because I caused what happened in there. But we need each other. Lizzie needs us. She needs us both. I just want to talk to you, Michael. That's all. Just talk. Janine, this isn't the time. She needs a mother. So. <laughs> Sir. Get in or walk. Yes? Beverly DeFranco, Chief of Police. I just wanted to let you know, on behalf of all our department, how very sorry we are about your wife. Have you caught my wife's killer yet? We're making progress. We don't have the person in custody yet, but we're doing everything in our power to get him. We'll get, we'll get justice. Yes, I'm sure. Please excuse me. You're gonna have to excuse poor Harry. He's a broken man. Yes, of course. Um, Arlene Chase. I'm Peter Chase's wife. You know Ember and Harry well? I know everyone here. You know, we were absolutely shocked when we heard about it. She was such a dear woman, and poor Harry. He worshipped her, you know? Would do anything for her. I don't know what he's gonna do without her. He's had such a hard time, you know, since the war. The war? Vietnam. He came back with all sorts of problems. It ruined his first marriage. Just about killed him and then he met Emma. He relied on her so heavily. You know, I used to think he was jealous of the pool of time that her students and her ward had on him. I don't know, he doesn't talk much. But he was never happier than the day he was talking to me about her retirement. Was Emma happy about it? About her retirement, I mean? I suppose so. She didn't talk to me about it. I think she was afraid she was going to miss her students. You know, I heard that. First call. We better get out of seats. It was very nice meeting you.
is that? It's poutine. It's Canadian specialty. Canadian, eh? Let's go ahead and try some. No, thank you. I kind of like my arteries the way they are. So how long has it been since Lizzie's accident? You just can't leave it alone, can you? Janine's a good woman. She shouldn't be going through this alone, and neither should you. Well, neither should Lizzie. It was an accident, wasn't it? Of course it was. Then why don't you just forgive her? Forgive Janine for what? For having an accident that wasn't her fault? It wasn't anyone's fault, except maybe God's for making it snow, or, or, or mine for having to work that night and not driving Lizzie myself. Or for the other drivers for being on the road. Or maybe I should just blame the state for dereliction of snow removal, or, or the weather station for be, being caught off guard by the storm. Or for the school for not canceling the game, or the coach for not calling herself. Or maybe I should just blame the, 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 the school system, or the team, or the DMV, or the local news station. But you know what? I can't. I can't blame anyone. Because it was just an accident, and accidents happen, and there's no one to blame. So Lizzie's in the hospital, a 17-year-old vegetable, and Janine won't eat out of guilt. And there's not a damn thing I can do to make it better. Because I'm just a father, and a husband, and a cop, and there's no one to arrest today. It's just a kid's song. The whole life was torn apart and destroyed. And there's no way to fix it, no one to punish, so no, I gotta sit on my hands and put on my good face and go in there and watch what used to be a bright, vibrant human being with their whole life in front of her, sucking up her dinner through a feeding tube. And there's not a damn thing I can do about anything. So I don't want to talk about it. I never want to talk about it. Get it? Got it. Good. If you do want to talk about it. I won't. Okay. Now about your arteries. Take a damn fry, will you? can't be. Look right there. What's wrong? There's been another murder at the concert. Who? Our number one suspect, Samantha Harris. Let's go. That was quick. She's over here. This shouldn't have happened. Cause of death? Mr. Axton discovered her about 10 minutes ago. It's like poison him, though. Thank you, Paul. Now we'll see what the coroner has to say. Klugman's out on another call. Everybody knows Evans. Evans, good to see you again. What's going on? I won't know for sure until I bring her back to the lab, but yes, what I'm seeing here is consistent with strychnine poisoning. Dr. Klugman tells me there's been a run, run of that around here lately. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Anything else? Looks as though there was some kind of struggle. There's bruising on her wrist, like someone was holding her down. Other than that, no other signs of trauma. Aside from spasms, of course. Robert Gray? Is he a relative? She was just walking around when she collapsed. It is a far, far better rest to go to than I have ever known. Dickens, isn't it? Tale of Two Cities. <sighs> yeah, it's a story of a grand sacrifice for love. What's wrong? This shouldn't have happened. We went to her house tonight to question her. She was our main suspect. And now she's your latest victim. We should have pursued it. She'd still be alive if I did. Uh, sir, we don't know that for certain. Know what? 
we went to her house to question her today. We suspected that she may have given Emma Gagnon laced uh, pills. But she wasn't home, and when we found out she was here, we figured we could just talk to her in the morning. If I hadn't been so damn concerned about her parents, she'd still be alive now. Look, unless you wanted this hit yourself, you are not to blame for this. For all we know, she could have taken the damn dose herself. Do I have to put someone else on this case, Michael? No, thank you, ma'am. Very well. We've had three murders in four days, and it's a poor reflection of my department. Now do this, get it over quickly, and if you don't mind, I have to make a statement to the bar. Ma'am. Ma well, you know, we could take Colin Wright out off the suspect list. He was in custody. It was poison song. He didn't necessarily have to force feed her for her to take it. What is going on here? What is the connection between Emma Gagnon, Sarah Hopper, and Samantha Harris? The three things we do know is the college, the music, and the drugs. What the hell is going on here, so? I don't know. Peter? Peter, but I have to ask you to leave. It's a crime scene going on right now. Yes, yes, of course, Nick, but I wanted to tell you something. That stone where Mrs. Harris' body was lying by. Yeah, Robert Gray, did you know him? In a way, Robert Gray was the student who killed Bridget Madden's father in a hit and run accident 20 years ago. You did it, so. Have you been here all night? Uh-huh. Study these files. DeFranco's gonna be here in about an hour. You did a good job, so. A plus. What did I do? You found our missing connection. Now read the file. Robert Gray, born January 18, 1977, in Lawrence, Massachusetts, to Nancy Gray, father unknown. In 1995, he begins classes at Noble College on scholarship, despite his somewhat checkered past. His juvenile record was, of course, sealed. How does a dead man figure into this case? Well, Robert Gray was the driver of a car that killed Bridget Madden's father. And I think he's the linchpin to this whole matter. Okay, explain. Well, Robert Gray begins at the college at the same time Emma Gagnon begins in the music department. And Dean Stewart is in the uh, associate in the biology department. Not only that, Thomas Atkinson is in his second year, and Samantha Harris is in her third year at that college. All right. So after the first year, Robert Gray hits a pedestrian, James Madden, while DUI, and kills him. Although he initially pleads not guilty, his lawyer, a Boston man no less, changes his plea to guilty, and Robert Gray was given the reduced sentence and paroled after seven years. So he was out? He was temporarily out. Then he hot-wired a car and was promptly put back in jail where he stayed for all sorts of reasons, until he died two years ago due to complications set in from a beating from two fellow inmates. He is buried in Connecticut, where he was in prison. Connecticut? But his mother... She's last reported in Florida yeah, about five years ago. We're trying to locate her now. But if she's in Florida and he's in Connecticut, who put up the memorial stone in Portsmouth, New Hampshire? Good question. And what does all this have to do with Emma Gay? I don't think it had anything to do with her. Samantha Harris was the intended victim all along. Sarah Hopper and Emma Gagnon just got caught up in the middle. We do know that Samantha Harris, Nee Brown, was the girl that all the boys went for. We also know that she came from a wealthy family out in California, where she went back to 20 years ago, and she has not been back in Portsmouth until five days ago. She did transfer from Noble College to Breburn College, California, for her final year. At the same time, Robert Gray went to court with his fancy lawyer that, of course, he couldn't afford on his own. Meaning someone else paid for me. Right. What's also interesting is the fact that though she was invited to every alumni and college event, until five days ago, Samantha Brown Harris never stepped foot into that place, despite being in Boston frequently. According to Peter Chase, she hadn't stepped foot into that place until she got 
the tour before the welcoming party on her first night in town. Two years after Robert Gray's death. So let me get this straight. You think Samantha Harris was involved in the car accident that killed Bridget Madden's father? Both she and Atkinson were questioned by the police at the time, but they had an alibi. Which was? Well, they were together all night, but let's just say they weren't. Let's say that Thomas Atkinson and Samantha Harris were in the car with Robert at the time. And let's say that mommy and daddy money bags didn't want their daughter mixed up with the hit and run. So they bribed Gray by hiring a fancy pants lawyer to get him a reduced sentence. And Samantha is shipped back home. So who does that leave us with the motive? No. Bridget Madden, whose father was killed, or Nancy Gray, whose son was murdered in prison. Okay, this is a lot of supposition. And where are you going to get the evidence to prove all this? From the one person who may know firsthand what happened the night Bridget Madden's father died. It's been like that since I found him this morning. Hey! This looks like it's going to take a while. <coughs> you better get him some coffee. Yeah, coffee. How are you feeling? Like I've been hit by a truck during a hangover. What a surprise. Well, we found another empty bottle in the trash. Thank God your stomach reacted the way it did, otherwise we'd be taking you to the hospital by now. You wouldn't be doing me any favor. You're not here to arrest me for murder. Why, is there any reason why we should do that? No. I love Emma Gagney. She, she was like a grandmother to me. And you love Samantha? Yes, I did. And that's the reason why you covered for her when she needed an alibi 20 years ago, isn't that right? Where you and she let Gray take the fall for James Madden's death, the father of Emma Gagnon's ward. You know about that. I know. She was Samantha Brown then. Wild, beautiful girl from California. She was the most beautiful thing we'd ever seen. I fell in love with her. Of course, everybody did, but she belonged out in the lights and the glamour. She was slumming it there at the school with us. Everybody knew it. And for some reason, she took a shine to me. And Robert Gray? Uh, Gray was uh, like me. A kid from the wrong side of the tracks, but it, it was different. I mean, aggressive. A little bully. He should have been kicked out of school a dozen, dozen and a half times, but somebody always came through at the last minute and saved his ass. He and I, uh, we had this rivalry going on for Samantha. And one day, Gray finds out that uh, she likes fast, expensive cars. So he goes and he steals one. Took her for a ride. And once she impressed, Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was very impressed. So she was in the car with him that night, unlike what you said in your testimony. Yeah, she, she came to me. She was panicking and worried she was going to go to jail. And you know what they do to someone like her in prison. She needed a... She needed a protector. She needed drug protection. She did. And when did she tell you the truth that it was she and not Gray that ran down Bridget Madden's father that night? Well, I, I figured that out pretty quick. She called her father all terrified. He told her, just get an alibi and I'll take care of the rest. So Daddy Bucks to the rescue, comes in and he grabs Robert Gray and browbeats him, bullies him, whatever. Gray ends up getting a Suitcase full of cash and a trip to incarceration. He was okay with that? Of course he was okay with that. It's as good a deal as a guy like him is ever going to get. He ends up going to prison. And she ends up going back to California. While you stayed here? While I stayed here. Samantha came to see me the day that Emma died. She was all worried that Emma was going to blackmail her, and she kept thinking that that's why Emma was pushing so hard for her to meet Bridget. Did Emma know? No. Emma never would have blackmailed anybody. Emma was all about the truth. Well, with Emma dead, why was Samantha frightened? 
Samantha had given Emma those pills to take during Bridget's rehearsal. And then, when she died, Samantha panicked, figuring someone had laced those pills with poison for her. She was right. I thought it was ridiculous. Those pills came from California. How would someone do that? She couldn't tell you about them, because then you'd know about the accident. And then, when the other girl died, I guess she thought she was safe. She thought wrong. I, I, I couldn't have killed her, Detective. I loved Samantha. I believe that you did love her. And I believe that you would have done anything she asked you to. And Samantha Harris knew it. Yeah. I guess she did. So we're bringing him in? No, I, I believe him that he would have done anything for her, but he wouldn't have killed her. So where does that leave us? Bridget Madden, whose father was killed, or Nancy Gray, whose son took the rap? Any word on who ordered the stone for Gray? No. I have a hunch I think I know who did. Come on, let's go. Wait a minute, where are we going? We talked to the man who paid for Gray's scholarship. You know who did it, don't you? Yep. You don't want to do that, sir. I really should. But I simply haven't the courage. I met Nancy Grace when I was a boy in high school. At the time, people of my persuasion were persona non grata in the community. I met her. She was bright, lively, beautiful. I thought, why not? Men go after women. So I tried it. It didn't last long. She moved away soon after that. I didn't even know I had a son until he was 12 years old. Robert Gray. Robert Gray. It was an odd thing, Detective. Suddenly finding out that you had a son when you had gotten used to the idea that you would never have children. Nancy was married at the time and she hadn't told her husband or Robert. We didn't want to confuse things. So she just introduced me as an old school friend, Robert's godfather. He was a good boy at heart, really. His family life was not the most stable. The men Nancy chose didn't tend to stick around. And you brought him to the school? Yes. I wanted him near me. He'd been in trouble, and I thought I could help him. And there was the dreadful accident. And you knew Samantha Harris was in the car at the time? No. Robert told me that he had been the one that was driving. I never would have let him go to prison if I'd known he hadn't been the one driving. Never. He loved her. He really loved her, and he sacrificed everything for her. But your son was instrumental in James Madden's death. That was Samantha Harris's fault, and my son paid the price for it. Did you know what they did to him in prison? Him? A pretty sensitive boy like that. They broke him, Detective. They broke him. He never even had a chance. And you bought the house near where he was in prison. Did you visit him regularly? Yes. Nancy did too, but a boy needs his father. When did he tell you the truth about the accident? Not until the very end. There, there had been a fight. They had broken his nose and his ribs, and he was in terrible pain. His lungs were filling up with water. By then, I knew the wardens pretty well, and they agreed to let me in by his bedside. He was in so much pain, and until the very end, he still had this sick loyalty to that woman. But he didn't want to die with me thinking that he had been a murderer. So when did you decide to kill Samantha Harris? When I got the call, when it was over, it was right then. But I didn't know what to do. I had already made an arrangement to meet in California for a lecture series. I knew friends that could introduce me to Samantha. You know, it was an easy thing. You know, just express an entrance in a, in a popular author. And I worked hard to get this lecture series set up and have her come in. I wanted her here. I wanted her surrounded by memories. I wanted her to remember what she had done. 
but I didn't know how to do it. The, the hard thing was driving away Niles. I did not want my partner mixed up in all this. So I had to, I got back and I pulled back my old chemistry textbooks. That was the easy part. When we were in California, I saw how she was popping these pain pills and complaining about her headaches. I knew I had it then. It was easy. When did you get your hands on the pill box? I arranged a party the night she arrived, a cocktail party. She was talking to Emma, and I had her purse and her coat. So I went inside, took out her pill bottle, and added pills to it. She would have no idea what was going on. I chose strychnine because it was slow acting enough that she'd know what was going on. Fast enough that not even the ENTs would be able to help her. It was a perfect plan. That's the same for Emma Gagnon? No, Emma. Poor, stupid Emma. That was a mistake. What happened the night of the concert? It couldn't have happened better if I planned it. <laughs> I left the concert, went out of the hall. She was outside trying to get out of the clutches of that fool Atkinson. <sighs> so I brought her a cup of coffee where I put one of the pills into it and told her I wanted to show her something, the memorial I'd set up for Robert. We started out she told me she had taken two pills already because of her headache. Then she drank my coffee. That was it. <laughs> no one could have saved her then. <laughs> what did she say when she saw the grave? She launched into her usual act. How it was Robert's fault and she was innocent. Yeah. She also talked about how sad it was Bridget would have to grow up without a father. I let her ramble on until the stomach cramps started. <laughs> then she tried to go back to the hall. <laughs> Didn't have that. So I held her down. It was over. Then I slipped back into the hall. No one even noticed. Well, I guess that's it then. This is my son, Detective. She destroyed him. What would you have done? Would you have let justice just been trampled? I got justice for my son. She got what she deserved. Well, the way I see it, your justice is just as deadly as her crimes. Samantha Harris could have offered those pain pills to anyone else. Her son, for instance. And she did offer them to Emma Gagnon. Your brand of justice killed two innocent people, Professor Stewart. I don't call that balancing the scale, do you? I've given you my confession, Detective. I've also written it down so you'll find it with me. Might as well have it. Sir? I wouldn't do that if I were you, sir. I decided I couldn't go to prison, and I won't. You really don't want to do that, sir. No, I suppose I don't. No! Detective Lawrence. Good afternoon, sir. They say that you've captured the person responsible for killing Emma and those two women. Yes, we did. Well. Not Professor Stewart, surely. I mean, it couldn't possibly be him. We've known him forever. We've been friends for a lifetime. He couldn't possibly have done Sorry, it. Sorry, sir. He gave a full confession. No! It's impossible. He couldn't have killed her. He couldn't Mr. have. Mr. Gagnon! Damn it! You police! You're all alike. You persist in arresting the wrong person. I knew I couldn't rely on you. You're paid to do this, and I solved it in a few hours. Oh, you did, did you? Mr. Gagnon, how did you hurt your hand? Sarah was looking for that backpack, didn't she? But Emma was holding on to it because she wanted to talk Sarah into turning herself in. But when she died, Sarah went into your house looking for that backpack. And that's when you found her. I don't know what you are talking about. There she was, rifling through your things, looking for that backpack. The woman you thought killed your wife. 
And then you took your boat out and you dumped her and her purse into the inlet. Isn't that right, Mr. Gagnon? God, it was so simple. She hounded her. She threatened her. She made her life miserable. And that morning that Emma... We all saw her running away. Your duty was to report to us, not beat her to death. Come on with me. You can't arrest me. Not you. That girl killed Emma. She killed her for a package of pills. Emma was the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. That wasn't murder. That was justice. It was murder. Sarah Harper couldn't have murdered your wife. The poison was in the pain pills that Samantha Harris took for migraines. Now come with me. You're lying. Come You're with me. You're lying. You can't arrest me. Not you. You can't tell me that you wouldn't have done the same thing to get justice for your daughter. He really was convinced that Sarah Harper killed his wife. He convinced himself of it when he seen her running away. And Bridget had gone out that night, and there he was, all alone, sitting in the darkness when Sarah broke in. Did he intend to kill her? Not at first. He confronted her, the person who had stolen his future. When he refused to hand over the backpack, Sarah panicked, and that's when he lost control. And Bridget? By the time Bridget had returned home that night, he had already dumped the body in the bay. She realized something was wrong when she found the backpack in Emma's room. We'd been arguing. On the night of the concert, he asked me to stay, to finish my scholarship like Emma would have wanted. He even offered to let me stay at the house and to cover things until I was finished. You know, he was really good to me in his own way. I knew Emma's death. God, I just can't believe it came to this. She's all alone now. What is she going to do? She's standing by him. She was offered a pot in an off-Broadway show, but she turned it down. Well, seeing she had no family and that Harry was her family, there's no way that she can leave him. She said Harry had lost a lot, and so did she. She's going to be OK. They both are. And Colin right out. He's cutting a deal with the DA. He's implicating everyone. Including Bridget and Sarah's roommate. They're both clean. I talked to Samantha Harris's husband, Matt's stepfather. He's taking Matt back to California with them. Well, seeing they didn't have much of an opportunity to bond, he felt this would be a good time to make up for lost time. And what about Atkins? The man who wasted dream. I turned all the information over to the DA. They'll decide what to do with it. Well, that seems to wrap everything up. Have you checked Stewart's confession? Well, it checks out as far as I can see. Nancy Gray did confirm everything. And definitely he was the one we were looking for. It's a pity so many had to die for his private satisfaction. How's Soam doing? Yeah, he's hurting. But he'll make it through. He'll be fine. And this was the clue that led you to Stewie? I saw it in his office. Well, when Soma had read the quote to me from the bench, it reminded me. It's a far, far better rest I go to than I have ever known. Dickens, isn't it? Kale of Two Cities. Yeah, it's a story of a grand sacrifice for love. I think Stuart was the romantic. Oh, they all were. Emma Rista lied to save Sarah's soul. Atkinson and Gray lied to cover for Samantha. The woman neither one could have. This whole thing is just so melodramatic. All this grand gesture of love. Oh, what they're calling love. It all comes down to choices. We have to make them every day. And this is a case where many different people made a lot of bad choices. Well, there seems to be a fine line between good and evil sometimes. It may be fine, but it's clear. All these grand gestures makes me wonder if we're living in the real world or not some Dickens novel. People make grand gestures every day, Michael. Some people are asked to die for the ones they love. Others are asked to live for them, to help them through the daily grind and hardships, to stand by them when that going gets tough. Dying for someone is easy. Living it is harder. You look tired, Michael. Isn't it time you went home?